Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin and in this video, I'm gonna be going over the stocks I think are on sale right now in September, 2023. In fact, I'm gonna cover four different stocks in this video. I own all four of these stocks in my portfolio and I think as of right now, they have a good margin of safety and they're trading at a very good valuation in my opinion. So if you get some value out of this video, go ahead and hit a thumbs up, really helps out the channel a lot. And let's just jump right into this first stock. Okay, the first one up is Dollar General, ticker symbol DG. Over the past year, the stock is down almost 50%, trading over $250 just back in November of last year. And right now it's trading around $125. So it has stumbled quite a bit over the past year. As far as Dollar General and their business, if you don't know much about them, they are basically a general store for the community. They have 19 thousand different stores over 47 different states and they're unique because 80 percent of their stores serve towns of 20,000 people or fewer so they actually tailor to smaller communities where say a you know a walgreens or a walmart or other like retailers kind of stay away from those regions uh, dollar general says hey that's right in our spec right in our uh, competitive advantage and we try to execute on that so uh, again they have over 19,000 stores they operate more stores than any retailer in the u.s and are located within five miles of approximately 75 percent of the u.s population here's some more stats on them they have about 170,000 employees in total they're rated uh, are ranked 106 on the fortune 500 list 3.3 billion dollars of operating profit in fiscal year 2022 uh, diluted eps in 2022 of around ten dollars now that's definitely taking a hit this year and that's why or one of the reasons why the stock has fallen so much but uh at least for last year they were on ten dollars of eps which is pretty good overall so what kind of gives them you know competitive advantage or what they try to focus on is uh, everyday low prices on quality merchandise so uh, even though they're called dollar general it doesn't necessarily mean that everything they sell is a dollar in the store in fact they tend to sell stuff around the ten dollar and less uh, price range in general they have convenient locations where we talked about they're within 75 percent of the total population within five miles and then they have a time-saving shopping experience and they're kind of like kind of tailoring to uh, kind of a unique space where they try to make it a treasure hunt a little bit so hopefully uh, people kind of impulse buy a little bit and uh, it picks up on, on revenue there but they are a small box store uh, in general now as far as a financial overview for them over the last 10 years certainly taken a beating over the last two years but on a you know 10 year time frame their EPS has actually grown 14 percent per year their sales per share has grown around 13 percent per year uh, but you can see the free cash flow has just been hammered over the last year and a half a uh, big reason that's because their inventory they've had a, a difficult time with the high inventory that they have uh, but the roic about 13 percent per year which is really really good on on in general uh one concern is the debt situation uh increasing over the last uh, couple of years but they're still in pretty good shape overall their margins are in the nine to ten percent which actually is really really good uh for a box retailer they tend to be very low i mean you look at walmart and others i mean they tend to be in the low single digit so uh, that's actually pretty good overall now, as far as a valuation for Dollar General, we'll be looking at a discounted operating earnings model here. So I think they're only going to grow around 5% or excuse me, 9% uh, on the top line over the next several years. Uh, I think they're going to be around a 9% operating margin, which is pretty in line with historical means. So only a 9% operating, um, you know, increase per year operating CAGR per year. Uh, over the next several years. And so I think the intrinsic value of the company is around $201 right now. Uh, the margin safety actually is closer to around 35% because the uh, stock price is around 135. I did this when it was $170. Uh, so the price actually uh, dropped quite a bit since then. So they're in that 35%, uh, not too far from 40% margin of safety overall, in my personal opinion. But always do your own research. And if you don't know how to value companies, I do offer 
different valuation templates on my Patreon if you want to go check it out. I'll put a link down below for you guys. All right, next stock up is uh, Tyson Foods, stock number two on the list, ticker symbol TSN. Uh, stock is down around 35% over the past year, so you can kind of see already a uh, consistency here. I'm trying to find companies maybe that have fallen too much uh, that are in a uh, good valuation compared to what their fair value is. Uh, right now, they're trading just above $50 per share. All right. So uh, business overview for, for Tyson Foods. Uh, most people know that brand right offhand, uh, Tyson Chicken uh, particularly, but we'll talk about more um, what they serve here in a bit. But one reason why they drop so much, the stock that is, is that they uh, announced that they were going to close four chicken plants across the country between late 2023, early 2024, cutting 3,000 jobs. That was announced on August 7th. Now, uh, I think actually this is a good thing. I think they're going to cut costs. I think it's going to hurt, or excuse me, make their margins better going into the future. But for right now, um, it does look bad. They did reduce their forecast uh, going forward. They had a bad earnings the last quarter. So that definitely has hurt the stock in the short term. Now, Tyson Food is one of the largest food companies and recognized leader in protein. Founded back in 1935. Some of their brands you'll recognize, uh, Tyson, obviously, Jimmy Dean, Hillshire Farm, Ballpark, and a lot others um, that are out there. Now, as far as a competitive advantage for Tyson Foods, it's actually pretty impressive among you know, uh, you know, category buyers uh, on a percent favorite brand. Uh, frozen nuggets, for example, 42% of frozen nuggets, uh, people tend to uh, buy Tyson. So they actually have a massive, large piece of that space. Their next competitor is 8%. Uh, so having 42% of that market is absolutely incredible. So you can see the different percentage here is very high frozen uh, strips, uh, frozen breakfast sandwiches, and so on. So they do have a very strong moat in their uh, industry overall. Now, as far as a financial history over the last 10 years for Tyson Foods, uh, kind of interesting over the last two years, very similar to Dollar General, uh, their free cash flow has just taken a massive uh, beating overall. But uh, on a 10-year, uh, Kager, the sales per share has been up around 4%. EPS is around 7%. Book value per share, 12%. So that's pretty good ROIC, average around 9%. Uh, their operating margins have been on 7% on average, which is pretty good. Uh, what's really impressive is their debt, only a 46% debt to equity ratio. That's phenomenal. If you're getting under 75%, that's pretty good. Under 50% is excellent. So uh, from a debt perspective, their balance sheet is in pretty doggone good shape. Now, as far as evaluation for this company, I think they're only going to grow 4% on the top line over the next several years. Uh, they're, I think, operating margins uh, are going to be around 7.5% uh, on average. And so it's only a 1% growth on the operating earnings line, in my personal opinion. Uh, so based on that, I get a, a fair value of around $73 for this stock, which is about a 30% margin of safety. Uh, so it does look like it is a pretty good deal right now based on these assumptions. Uh, stock number three is advanced. Auto parts, ticker symbol AA. P. Uh, the stock is down roughly 60% uh, over the past year. I mean, they were trading well over $200. And then here today, it's just around uh, between $60 and $65. So it has dropped quite a bit. Uh, Advanced Auto Parts, most people would recognize. Uh, they have about 4,700 stores across the United States. Uh, they have 50 different distribution centers, 1,300 independents. Uh, so they definitely have a good footprint across uh, the nation there. Uh, some of their brands you might recognize, CarQuest is a big one, uh, Auto Part, and then Die Hard. So some catalysts, I think, for advanced auto parts. So, so keep in mind, the stock has fallen so much because uh, they reduced their forecast. They had a bad couple of quarters. Uh, and then also they reduced their dividend. A lot of people were in advanced auto parts because of their uh, dividend. Uh, they're, they're a strong dividend payer. So when they reduce it significantly, a lot of people got out. Now, I think there's some good catalyst for the company going forward. So chip shortage constrained new vehicle sales. So people are holding on to uh, their vehicles longer. In fact, the average car is about 12 years old. Advanced auto parts, that's where you can go and buy all kinds of different 
uh, parts for your car. So if you're doing an oil change or you need to change your spark plugs, Vance Auto Parts, O'Reilly's, uh, AutoZone, those are kind of the big three uh, across the nation. The average annual mileage continues to rise. Inflationary environment limits spending, pitting folks to perform their own car repair. So I think Advanced Auto long term is still in really good shape overall. Now, sort of financial metrics over the last 10 years. Now, some of them don't look good because of recent, very similar to Dollar General, Tyson Foods, uh, free cash flow has taken a massive beating over the last. Uh, year and a half, but even still, sales per share is growing around 8% per year. Their ROIC is averaged around 10%, uh, pretty good overall. Their operating margins have been around 7 to 8%, not as good as some of their competitors like O'Reilly's and AutoZone, uh, but I still think it's a, a business that is uh, growing not a ton on the top line or bottom line, but it is still growing overall. Now, as far as evaluation for this company, I think they're only going to grow about 2% per year on the top line. They're going to average around 6% operating margins, only 2% growth for operating margins or operating operating income, excuse me, over the next several years. So based on, I think the share price should be worth around $100, which is roughly around a 35% margin of safety right now. So uh, it does look like it is a decent buy. Now, the fourth stock I want to talk about is Ally Financial, ticker sold A. LLY. A uh, stock is down roughly 20% over the uh, last 12 months. Uh, it's kind of been volatile. I mean, it was up around, you know, between 35 and 40, dropped all the way down below 25, was up to 35, dropped again, and now it's kind of hanging around the $27 uh, price range right now. Now, as far as a business overview for LA Bank, Obviously, they are a bank, uh, number one largest all digital direct U.S. bank, uh, 2.9 million Ally Bank deposit customers, which is fantastic. When the whole uh, Silicon Valley bank collapse that happened uh, several months ago, I actually read an article that suggested Ally Bank with another like eight or nine different banks were going to go out of business. Uh, I think that's completely ludicrous. $139 billion of retail deposit balances. That's why Silicon Bank had such a hard time and other small regional banks because deposits dropped so much. They had to sell bonds, uh, which created a huge loss on their P&L. And uh, they really uh, struggled and some of them actually went out of business. But LA Bank continues to grow uh, year over year and their deposits continue to grow. I mean, check this out. Very dirt diversified consumer deposit franchise, a 96% customer retention rate, which is absolutely phenomenal. Again, 2.9 million retail deposit customers. This is a bank that continues to grow quarter over quarter, year over year. I think there is a strong push across the board for a lot of banks to go uh, digital, which we are seeing. Li is kind of leading the way there. In fact, if you look at from JD Power, uh, when they're ranking best check providers or checking providers, that is for banks, uh, Li Financial is number three. Schwab is number one. Discover Bank is number two. Li is three. Over on the savings side of the world, again, these are all uh, digital banks. Li Financial is number three again. So from these rankings, it actually looks like Discover and Ally Bank um, are kind of the best in this uh, on these categories. But uh, nonetheless, Ally is a uh, you know strong in that category overall, ranking top three in, in both. All right. Now, intrinsic value for Ally Bank. Keep in mind that banks are uh, very different than uh, other type of, of, of industries or sectors. So I can't do necessarily a operating earning model like I would with. Um, other companies or other sectors. So what I'm kind of doing here is looking at return on assets. I'm looking at their assets to equity ratio. I'm looking at a normalized price to book. And I'm calculating three different types of uh, what I would consider uh, yields or what I think I could earn from this business over the next several years. So from a reinvestment yield, which kind of looks at um, uh, dividends, uh, for example, or, and book value uh, growth as well. I'm thinking it's coming up with a 19% CAGR per year over the next several years. Uh, you get the earnings yield, which kind of looks at earnings, and then a price to book yield, which looks mainly at uh, book value per share. So if I average all those out, that's about 18% average. Uh, so again, what I think I'd earn from this business per year over the next several years, about 18% per year. So that looks like a very, very good valuation at this time. 
Okay, so those were the four stocks I wanted to talk about today. So again, let's just summarize these real quick. So I talked about uh, Tyson Foods, I talked about Ally Financial, I talked about Dollar General, and then Advanced Auto Parts. So I think all four of these stocks look like they have a very, very good value valuation right now, at least a, a 30% margin of safety or bigger at this time. I own all four of these stocks. I think that they will do long, good long term, but that's based on the assumptions that I showed on this video. Again, you should be able to value stocks on your own. You should be able to do research on your own. I also put a link down below. If you don't know how to read a 10K, I have a video on how to do that uh, within 15 minutes. That kind of gives you a good idea on how to do research and how to read a 10K, which is a very valuable resource when you're trying to uh, find out and do more research on a company. You should always read the 10K before investing, in my personal opinion overall. Again, if you want to know how to value companies, that's on my Patreon, which the link is down below as well. Curious from you guys, do you own any of these four stocks? I mean, what stocks are you buying for September 2023? I would love to hear from you in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on the other side. Take care. God bless and go Buffs.